Hi, this is Dr. Rihanna Elise Anderson, and welcome back to Listening Well. I am so excited to have Milk with us today. Hello, Milk. How are you? Hello, doing well. Nice to meet you, Dr. Anderson. <laughs> oh, you, you can call me Rhee, whatever makes <laughs> Dr. you happy Rhee. today. Dr. Rhee, I like that. Yes, <laughs> that's how we go. Yes, yes. Well, we're so happy to have you today. We've got a lot to dive into, but I would just love for you to share with the listeners and the watchers who you are. Just give us a little background on who is Milk. Absolutely. Um, my artist name is Milk. My given name is Connie Lim. Um, and uh, I go by the artist name Milk because it's my last name backwards and my first two initials. I kind of scrambled it up. I wanted to take what my my parents and my ancestors gave me, but make it into something new that I could get excited about in this new country that we've moved to. And um, milk is also what uh, we use to nourish the next generation. So I'm a musician and I hope to use my art to nourish and to help people feel as strong as they can possibly feel to uh, reach their fullest manifestations of self. Um, and I love songwriting. I love the art of music and storytelling. And I believe in the power of art to help us um, just get through the days. I'm thinking about as a clinical and community psychologist, nourishment is it's just such a well-described way of talking about mental health. And I'm really curious about when you may not be feeling completely nourished, What like how do you know that those are the times where you need to do some checking in with yourself or with other people? What, what does it bring up for you that this is not the moment where I'm feeling as full um, on what I need. That's a great question. I feel like I have certain telltale signs as I've gotten older. I've gotten to know my telltale signs of when I have burnout or when I'm starting to when I'm starting to feel like my well is starting to get a little dry. So I'll tend to want to numb out or like I'll want to binge eat. I'll want to uh, watch a bunch of Netflix um, when I'm finding that my cravings are to want to tune out of my life. That's when I know something in my life needs to get adjusted. Um, and so food and media consumption have been two really big indicators of when I'm burnt out. It's so interesting that those are things just in our society that are so common. Like people will love to just snack and sit and watch. Like those are things that we've done to comfort ourselves. And what you're saying is that's actually malnutrition. That's a sign for you that that's not uh, nutrient rich, that your well is running dry, which I, I love. So um, just a, a observation there that our society is so different from that now, right? That's very true. Yeah, I feel like we are given a lot of options to tap into those maybe uh, like you said the, the really interesting word to use like malnourishment um and there are plentiful all those kind of like quote unquote empty calorie activities are abundant around us and the nourishing activities like being outside taking in the um outside air if if we're blessed enough to be in an environment where the outside air is healthy for us that's that's like an incredible thing being able to look at be around trees plants flowers those have been the best in the best nourishments for me um and then like moving my body um <clears throat> sometimes when i feel like i'm tired i want to lie down and then i want to like watch something but actually i found if i just trick my brain into going on a walk i can actually t uh, almost like quote unquote hack the system and get more energy just from movement because that's actually what my body wants. You are bringing in some really great coping strategies of getting fresh air. If you're in it. And I love too that you're mindful of the environment, right? So if you're able to, if it's a safe space to do it, if you have the space to actually engage in the outside world, um, getting that fresh air, getting that nature, taking those walks, those are some really great things um, that folks can do. What are other things that you have done when you find yourself in these more challenging mental health spaces? Thanks for asking. I feel like as a musician, I'm very physically sensitive. Like I'm very uh, the like somatic. I, I My body feels certain things. So music has a huge impact on me. So I've enjoyed listening to ambient um, music. Uh, and I first started just YouTubing um, rain falling on a car window 
And then like hearing that kind of lo-fi rain sound and having that. And some people don't enjoy that. And some people really do. I personally love it. And then I started turning to like, it kind of goes to what you, we were talking about, like being mindful of different people's different situations with their outdoor environments, but like even putting on um, a mountain spring video or something like having um, a screen that's playing something that's nourishing um, and then that has a sound that feels like nature, just simulating that indoors has been super helpful for me. The latest thing that is really helping me um, is and is revolutionizing my life, actually. It's such a simple thing, but um, having undistracted meals. So in, wow. like sitting down and, ha- and making a plate of food, maybe at, like at least once a day if I can. I don't expect myself to do this every meal because life gets busy. But if I can sit down with a plate of food and like sit with it and look at it and not watch TV, not have a conversation, but just sit with the food and eat it, in silence, that's been very transformative because it helps me to remember how important it is to give myself that time to just feed my body. When I'm feeling depressed and anxious, when I snap into thinking about what I could do for others, just it shifts Mm -hmm. things and makes me feel better when I activate into momentum with community, with friends, with family. If I can just like not think about myself uh, for a second and give to others if that's like if I'm getting a little too neurotic that that is the best medicine it's beautiful and it I, I have like two roads I'm trying to go down yeah. with the, these questions so let me just go down this Great. road because I had it in my mind I'm ready. but I'm, with you. Um, in pack- <laughs> I'm in the passenger seat let's go let's go down the road excellent let's go let's go <laughs> for some people your provision of music is the support that they need. That's, that's what they need to ingest. And so for so many people, you being able to give them the gift of song has been a blessing for them, has been the nourishment for them. What is one song that you're, Mm. when you think about the impact that it had on other people that provided them the support that they may may have needed at the time, what's that song that comes to mind for you? The song I wrote called Quiet, uh, which went viral at the Women's March and then became this anthem for the women's movement. And and I think beyond gender, it's, it's, it's a song for people who have survived a form of silencing. Um, that song, I think, has been the, the most meaningful offering that I've been able to participate in. And I don't really view like it's me. I feel like I do the work to be the clearest channel and then spirit source, God universe works through me. And, um, that song has been a tremendous experience for me as well as with like listeners. Um, so I'm very grateful for that song. So you're talking about, um, how your songs have become anthems for women. And we're thinking about the time right now that we're in where women are um, having to be mindful of of choices that are being made and policies that are being made. And we're thinking about just coming out of Women's History Month. Tell us a bit about this activism that you are engaging in with your music. It sounds like this is an ability for you to uh, create space for voice and for action. So talk to us a bit about that. Right now with being able to be a part of the choir of voices that sing for women and sing for people who stand with women, um, I feel like it's really important for me to be a beacon of, of love and light and to encourage people to nourish their full whole selves. And when I say full whole selves, like let's embrace our light, let's embrace our shadow and let's get like good with why we have our shadows so that we're not projecting it onto each other. Um, and let's care for each other. And the fight is going to continue on. Um, this is not a, you know, we all know that women protecting our right to, to be full agents of our bodies and our lives is not a new Um, not a new fight. And so I'm in this for the long haul. And what I'll say is regardless of what the politics and what, um, yeah, regardless of what politics are doing, 
the woman body and woman spirit is absolutely free and powerful no matter what. And that's my full belief. And we are one of the most untapped resources on our planet. And the more that I can give and serve the feminine um, within each of us, regardless of gender, uh, the more we're going to heal. And I, I, I hope more people get inspired to invest in the feminine regardless of gender so that we can protect women. Yes, yes, yes. But and this healing point that you're bringing up is so important and it goes with what we've talked about before here where sometimes you want to just ball up and be by yourself and isolate and not get the support of other people around you. But what you're saying is that there is this energy within each of us and that music can be something that helps to heal that energy, that being around others and having that support can help with that healing. It just sounds like such an important, again, nutritious like component for us, right? Yeah, that's really well said. And I, for anyone who's feeling tension because they want to hole up and hide, I totally get it. Like I, and I have been really navigating that myself um, and I think acknowledging with my close loved ones that I want to hide sometimes from this really overwhelming world has been a really nice way of helping me through the journey as I like, continue to face the world. Cause it's, it's that, I think that's the challenge of being an adult is, is am I going to continue choosing to face the world, face the music um, or do I want to hide? So maybe both are the same. You know, I, I want to hide, but I face the music anyway. <laughs> yeah. 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 And it sounds too, uh, what strength that you have to have to be able to tell the people around you, I'm acknowledging that I want to be in a hole right now, but I'm coming to you and letting you know that I need something. What is it? What type of support is helpful for you? So I think for some people, just the it feels so tiring to be able to talk to people or to want to come out of that shell. So what does support look like for you? What, what do you notice when you start to get it that's happening to you? Just talk to us a bit about support if you can. Yeah. Support for me um, is uh, authentic interaction with my closest community. So what I mean by that is um I thrive off of honesty. And so when my support system, like my, my intimate partner, my best friends, my family, when they give me real feedback, um, it helps me to improve. So in order for that to happen, um, we have to develop a, an authentic relationship through the good times and the, and the hard times. So um, I think support for me looks like continually showing up for people or checking in in creative ways in this modern era. Like, for example, I have a friend who lives um, in Montana and we don't get to see each other often and she just had a baby and um, it's hard for us to catch each other on the phone. So we send each other voice memos and then we share photos with each other. We have albums that we can like check in. So even if it's um, a modification of, you know, a deep conversation we can have on the phone, we're still doing these things so that we can be accessible to each other. Um, and also just like a nice text message from a friend, even like, Hey, thinking about you, hope you're okay. Like, are you, are you staying hydrated? Are you getting rest? You know, stuff like that. It's been, that's the support I need just to know that I'm being thought of and to know that I can think of others too and make that effect. I am, I'm thinking too, again, about, uh, the time that we're in right now and trauma informed care or trauma is a word that comes up so much in so many of the like blogs or social sites that I've seen. I'm just curious what, what has the role of trauma been for you? What are things that you're thinking of these days when you hear it brought up in our, our modern conversations? Just talk to me a bit about this modern take on the word and your experience with it. Yeah, I love that you brought that up. So before I get into what trauma, my relationship with trauma is, like, I'll define it for myself because I feel like 
trauma has a, a lot of definitions. So for me, like I've read a definition I thought was very interesting. Trauma it um, is a thing that um, can happen to us when we feel a sense of um, a lack of control. When something happens to us that we can't fully control and we understand that we must surrender and it's something that we didn't expect happen to us um, and that can shape our future selves. And so that can be a huge wide range of things for me. Um, trauma ha has been something that I've related to my childhood um, and it involves things like sexual assault, domestic violence, um, and um, mental health um, within the household. And I have been spending my entire life addressing the traumas that happened in my childhood and understanding the layers of impact it's had over the years. Um, and also understanding that that trauma that happened in my childhood is also a reflection of the tra trauma that happened to my mother, to my grandmother, um, and so on and so forth. So it's like generational. Um, and I have found a deep love for people who are courageous to face their traumas and to ask themselves, how, how does my hurt hurt others? And to really look at that. Um, and I, I feel like it's actually a surprisingly small amount of people that do work on their traumas and honestly look at how their inner hurts hurt others. Um, so I'm hopeful that we can encourage people to do more of it because I have found that my life has become more rich, abundant, and, um, loving and awe-inspiring the more that I face the hard questions about myself and my trauma. Um, yeah, so I hope that it's an inspiring thing that people can feel like excited to work on it, even though it's hard. Man, the payoffs are just so deep and so beautiful. Oh my gosh, that's, what a beautiful definition. What a beautiful way of acknowledging the intergenerational nature of it. And, and, the way you described it is not just intergenerational, which I think we're becoming more used to talking about, but the spread around it, like I just, I'm seeing like a cell, right? Mm -hmm. And like how it's just multiplying and splitting and going all these ways and how much impact it has on so much around us. So yeah, thank you for that really rich definition and, and visual for me. That was really impactful. Thank you. Thanks for saying that. Yeah. Yeah. What I also love about this definition that you've brought up is the inspiration to be inspired, to want to work on something so challenging that, again, for so many people might be, nope, shutting down, not dealing with it, not going to get out of this protective, this, this sensible mm -hmm. space that we've created to be safe and, and free from that harm. Um, but to make that decision to then open up and to be vulnerable, to inspire others as a result of that work, it does remind me quite a bit of the power of music and what music can do for all of us going through these times. What has the role of music been, for, been like for you as you've been exploring your mental health over the years? How has it been healing? How has it been challenging? How has it pushed you to your next level. Talk to us about the music. Music has been my way of pulling myself out of really traumatic and dark times for myself. The piano, melodies, writing and expressing my ideas when my ideas were not welcome. It was my way of being able to protest um, in plain sight. Um, and so it has empowered me and given me a sense of voice even when I didn't have one in my actual day-to-day -day life. Um, and then the art of creating music uh, is a really amazing thermometer. It kind of checks, it kind of tells me my state of wellness or my state of honesty. If I'm in my head and overly analyzing and a little too results oriented about something I'm creating, the music will fall flat. But if I learn to just surrender to the fact that I don't control everything and that um, 
that I need to trust and just like to be grateful and in awe of the process, I get into like a trance state and I can create a music that is, I'm not writing, even if I write a song quote unquote by myself, I always joke like I have another co-writer, it's like source universe. And when I'm like really just surrendering to the fact that I am just one little human and I'm just lucky to be here, um, the music comes through in a really beautiful way. So it's a spiritual practice and it keeps me really uh, honest with myself. Um, like, okay, am I too in my head and trying to control too many things that I can't control? Or am I really doing my best to be at one with this this thing called life? Um, and music has a power of doing that. And then like the business side, of the industry is really hard for me. But what I have found that helps me is to surround myself with great people um, that I love being around, that I trust. And so we can have fun on the business side and do business in a loving, honest, compassionate, and also really f like smart, strategic way. Um, that's been a game changer for me. You know, I wish I could sing because then I would be like, let's collaborate. <laughs> I feel your vibe, yeah. the energy. This is great, but I will spare you. <laughs> we today. we are co-writing right now. This is our That's... this is our duet. Okay. Yeah. Like yeah. Let's <laughs> put it on wax. Let's do this. I love that. Yes. What a I think that's a beautiful way to even get us to the final question in my mind, which is what steps do you see yourself taking? What are those future pebbles that you're laying so that you're making it to the next space for you? What, what's the future like for Milk? Thanks for asking. I'm working on a, a long form musical, which has been a gift because now I'm learning uh, long form storytelling. Songs for me have been three and a half minutes, usually around that time of, of a story. But now a musical um, is, is 20 some songs strung together with characters and narratives. And so I'm working with La Jolla Playhouse um, and they're commissioning a, a project that I'm working on that really does deal with um, uh, trauma and the and the, the empowered healing from it. Um, it's a musical about healing. Um, and so that's something I'm working on and I'm gonna be releasing an album um, and that's all coming together. So um, by the time this video has come out, I will have just released a new song called Best Part. And I'm really, really proud of this record because it is one of my, um, my m one of like the, the most important projects after I left a major label. And this song was me asking myself, what will my record sound like if I just honor my instincts and not watered down any of my instincts for other people. Um, so that record's coming out um, and it's gonna be um, on Grey's Anatomy. Um, it's gonna air April 4th on like one of their last episodes and their last scenes. So I'll be able to celebrate that. And and um, yeah, and then I'm working with Tom's Apparel and we're working on like a mental health campaign. So it's very aligned with what's happening right now. Um, and I think that one is also coming out around April or so. So yeah, it'll be, I'm, I'm alongside like five other amazing um, individuals that are doing cool work in the mental health space. Um, so yeah, that'll, that'll be coming out. So hopefully people can get, you know, in touch or, you know, just connect with me on socials and I'm going to start posting. I took a mental health break of three months coming back. Yes. I'm coming back now. So yes. I'm nervous, but I'm also t making all the guardrails to, to mindfully re-enter the space. So. Yep. And that's it. You, we kept talking about it today that mindfulness is such an important thing to do in, in any space that we're in, just because you sounded so excited about it. We just have to hear what's Give us the message of best part. What are we like? What are we listening for? The best part of losing you is finding I can make it through when you left me on the dark side of the moon. So that's like the, the that's like the part of it. My my family had a hard time accepting my my choice of partner and they mm -hmm. refused to meet him for three and a half years. And it really 
broke me down. Um, but in that process, I learned how to find myself again through that. So it's mm -hmm. from that. And also like I left a major label. And what does that look like losing that, losing the idea of what success looks like from the, my young teenage fantasy self, like just all mm -hmm. the things we lose, what does it, what does it actually gift us in the, in, in the long run? So that's what the song is about. I will be first in line <laughs> to consume Yay. that song. It's, yes. Oh, what a joy. This has just been fantastic. Are there things that we have not covered that you want to No, I, you're with? awesome. It's been so fun to chat with you. Thank you so much. Yes. And yeah, I'm grateful to be here. Thank you. Well, this has been Listening Well with Dr. Rihanna Elise Anderson. Once again, thank you, Milk, so much for joining us today. Thank you. And be well, y'all. Take good care.